Welcome, this is Algebra 1, Semester 2, Unit 9, Final Exam Study Guide Review. Again, I'm just going through how to eliminate incorrect answers and look at these problems um, to mark them correctly to get full credit. If you are studying the concepts, I highly suggest that you go back to the units and study through the concepts of how we uh, studied them when we were there. Okay, um, first one in this unit is a quadrilateral that I've graphed and I'm asking you what the domain and range are. Remember on quadrilaterals they spread out forever and ever and domain is your x coming in from the sides and when we talk about domain and range if we have limitations then it means that we could build a wall and it would never get pushed by the graph but where the absolute value is forever expanding side to side it will never allow for walls to be brought in on the domain. So domain for quadratics should always be all real numbers. I've got that in three options, but right here, I can mark that answer option out because there's the problem. I've given limitations on the domain. Can't have that with quadratics. So now the next thing that we look at is the range. We notice that the highest point, the maximum, equals negative 1. Remember, k is our maximum. And also, if it's reflected, we found that it meant that y was less than that value. Now, because it can touch that point, it is also equal to. But that's how we would find our range. Now, if the U-shape was going up, then it would be greater than, it would not be a reflection. So we come over and we look at our options. Here this was greater than 1, less than 1. Both of them have the incorrect point, they have it up here at 1. The only correct one is this one at negative 1. Next problem. Which of the following quadratic functions represent the function below? Well, we see that we've got a shift. It has gone from the origin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's gone down 5. We know in order to go down 5 that it's got to be out here at the K. That's where we're going to go down 5. So we look at our functions that we're given. This is in at the h. A positive h goes left 5. A negative h goes right 5. So we can mark those out. Now the only difference between these two is that this is 1 half, this is 2. Well, we know 2 means that it's compressed and it's stretched upwards and skinnier. So if we come out on our parent function, it would be at 0, 0. 1 squared is 1. So it would come over 1, up 1. Here, it goes over 1, but it goes up 2. It has a rise of 2 and a run of 1. So that gives us the indication that it is stretch. Now on quadratics, it doesn't always follow the perfect slope of 2 over 1, but we can spot that it's a stretch instead of a shrink. That would be a shrink. Okay? Which of the following graphs represents this? Well, we know that this means right 4. We look down at our graphs. Here we have, from the origin, 1, 2, 3, 4. Goes to the right 4, so that would be the correct answer. What happens here? It goes down 4. So this would be x squared. Well, you can write it in the format, actually. Um, y equals x minus h squared minus 4. Okay, and you can put a 0 in there for the h, or you can just leave it as, as x squared minus 4. This one 
happens to go up for, but do you notice it's also flipped upside down? So that would be a negative x plus 4. Don't forget that it's squared. That's how we get the u shape. This one goes to the left 4, so it would be x plus 4 inside the square with the h value. Make sure to go back and study the concepts if you're just now learning those. This film is not intended for that. It's intended to review for the final. Okay, and just how to select answer choices. Translate four units to the left. Ooh, that would be x plus four squared. Three units up, plus three and stretch the graph by a factor of two. That goes to the front. There doesn't appear to be any reflection. So we look at what's wrong with our answer choices. This one seems to be perfect, so that must be our answer. We'll come back and change that if we need to. This one has a negative four in there. That would go right four. This one. Again, a negative 4, right? 4, and it has a shrink. This one has a shrink. And it is correct other than that shrink. Okay, so that's how we mark our answers to show that we understand the, the thought process completely. Which of the following quadratic equations? Quadratic functions represents the functioned graph. Well, what do we notice here? Our vertex has gone to the left 3, so we would have x plus 3 to go left. It also has gone down 1, and it's a reflection. It's going upside down. When we look here, all of these are reflected. This one goes right three. It would be over here to the right. This is left, that's good. Ooh, this one is right one and down one, or not down one, to the, I'm sorry. Whew. forgive me, that would be left one because our positive inside the h value goes opposite of how it appears and this one would be right one. So that shows what's incorrect with the others. Okay, which of the following is the vertex for? When we're in HK format, we know that our vertex is HK. Don't forget that this is a positive H and in the formula it's a minus H. So it's the opposite of how it appears because we know that goes right 5. We show that the vertex is right 5 up 2. They give you the option of that negative 5. They're trying to trick you there. And then over here, these are just completely out. Positive 5 negative 20. What they're trying to do here on the po positive 25 is they're trying to square that, which we don't ever do, and the negative 20 is that they're trying to multiply the negative 4 and the 5. So that's why those are out. What is the intercept of the graph? The y-intercept of the graph. Okay, the best way to find y-intercept, remember, was in our standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and c is our y-intercept. So in order to get from this form to that, we just need to expand. 2x minus 1 times x minus 1, that's what squared means, plus 3. Now we FOIL these, x squared or box method, minus, on the outside we have negative 1x, Inside we have negative 1x, so that would be a negative 2x. Negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 2. 
leave them in parentheses, we still need to distribute that too. 2x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 3. To get our final c value, we'd add those two together. Okay. And we would get... Oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And 1 times 2 is 2, so 2 plus 3 is 5. That's also on a test how I catch my mistakes is when I look and the right option isn't available. Now we can see our y-intercept is right here. Up here they tried to give you the vertex for a y-intercept. That's not the same. You can mark it as vertex. Um, here they're just trying to go straight to there. That's not true. That would not be your y-intercept. You're not taught that in any way. And here, what they've done is they've forgotten to add in the 3. They just took it straight out of there, which isn't the final form. Again, if you're needing to review quadratics, go to the notes. I'm just helping you to see how to mark your test and eliminate the wrong answers. Given the graph y equals x squared, what is the solution for x after the transformation down 4? 1, 2, 3, 4, and left 3 units. 1, 2, 3. Okay, now we would just graph it. Just like you're translating that graph, you'll notice the solutions where it crosses the x-axis is solutions. Uh, maybe we should mark that x-intercepts and all you did is you copy pasted this down to the translated vertex and it shows that the solutions would be at negative 1, negative 5. That's where it's crossing the x at negative 1 and then down at negative 5. Positive 3 is definitely out and positive 2 is definitely out. So the those are pretty nice choices to be able to eliminate. Which of the following are x-intercepts for this? You have an option here. You can complete the square, but since you're given the answers, sometimes it's easiest to just go ahead and solve it. So we put in 0 for the y, because we know on x-intercepts y equals 0. 0 equals x plus 2 squared minus 16. Now for greater accuracy in our solving we have a tendency to do better when the zeros on the other side so we switch it over here. Draw our line, circle our creepy dude, go up our PEMDAS. What can we add or subtract? Well if we look in here there's a plus 2 but that's inside the parentheses. We have to get to the top of our ladder to do that. So we go on the outside, there's 16, so let's add 16 to each side. We get x plus 2 squared equals 16. Now to get rid of a square, we have to take the square root. So that wipes that out, and we get plus or minus radical 16. Well, radical 16 is 4, so we have a positive 4 and a negative 4. x plus 2 equals each of these. Now to get the x alone we subtract 2. So this will come out to be a positive 2. This one will come out to be a negative 6. We look for our answers. Positive 2 and negative 6 we have negative 6, positive 2 there, that would be the answer. Negative 2 here, that's what's wrong with it. Uh, negative 16 is incorrect. And positive 16. And negative 2 is incorrect. Okay. What is the solution for this? It looks like we're using the quadratic formula. 
Remember, a negative boy couldn't decide whether to go to a radical party or be squared without four awesome chicks because it all gets over at 2 a.m. Come up here and we mark our A, our B, and our C. Plug in our B value, a negative 9, plus or minus 81, minus 4, times 1, times negative 4, over 2 times 1. So we can clearly see we should have a negative 9 in the front and a 2 on the bottom. We can eliminate some answers right off of that. Negative 9, positive 2. Not a negative 9, so we can mark that one out. Circle the 9's. This one does not have a negative 9. Mark it out. Negative 9 and positive 2. The only difference between these is what's inside the radical. So we need to decide right now what that correct answer would be. We have 81 and we have a negative 4 times 1 would be negative 4 times 4 is negative 16, but then there's a negative here. So we would be taking 81 plus 16. That would give us the 97. What's incorrect here is 65. They subtracted there, but two negatives make a positive. Okay, next one, which of the following is a solution? Again, it looks like the quadratic formula. Do not forget you've got to move this 18 over to this side before you get that quadratic formula. So 2x squared plus 14x minus 18 equals 0. Now you have your a, your b, and your c value. Okay. A negative boy, a negative 14, couldn't decide. 196, 14 squared, without 4 times 2 times negative 18. All over 2. Now, you notice here that as we finish up, whoops, 2 times 2. As we finish up, we have a negative 14 over 4 on the front, plus or minus Radical, we've got 196, then we're going to add to it because we have two negatives again. 18 times 8, 144, so 196 and 144, 10, 14, 340. Radical 340. But that's all over 4 still. Okay? We can reduce this to being negative 7 over 2. Question is, can we reduce this one? If we break down 340, will 4 go in there? That's our question. We know that it will because the last two digits. 4 will go into 40. So 4 will go into 34 8 times. 4, that would be 32, 20. 85 times. So when we bring that out of the radical, it would become 2 radical 85. That would reduce, so we would have plus or minus radical 85 over 2, which means that we can put them back over a 2 by themselves. So this one was correct, but not reduced. This one up here appears to be correct. This one does not have a negative 7, and this one does not have the 85. Next, which of the following is the vertex? Well, that means that we need to complete the square and get it back into HK format. So we go y plus blank equals, remember building the squares in class, 4x plus blank, plus 7. Take the middle term, divide it by 2, and square it. That would equal 2 squared, which is 4. 
put a 4 there, and same thing on the other side. y plus 4, now the whole reason that we did this is that's a perfect square. So we can simplify it into x plus 2 squared plus 7. Subtract 4 from each side. Get y equals x plus 2 squared. 7 minus 4 is 3. Right there is our vertex. Remember the h is the opposite of how it looks, so it's a, we go left 2 and up 3. Oh, and it didn't ask for vertex, just ask for the format. So here they have a negative 2, that would be incorrect. A negative 2 there, that's incorrect. Here we have the plus 2 plus 3, so that's correct. Here we have a plus 7. Okay. Last little bit of Unit 9. What is the y-intercept of this graph? Remember, the y-intercept is your c-value, so it's positive 15. 9 wrong, 9 wrong, and negative 15. The negative's wrong. Okay. What is the vertex of the function? Ah, this is one where we need to complete the square and take it to this step where we go clear down to the vertex. So again, we get to practice completing the square. Um, in class, we talked about in order to complete the square that we need to have just an x value up there not the negative 2. So in doing this with the negative 2, my best recommendation would be instead of completing the square, because that negative 2 is kind of keeping us from that, we look at our vertex from standard form, which is negative b over 2a, and then we have to plug it in to get our y value. So a, b, and c Negative b is negative 8 over 2 times negative 2. So negative 8 over negative 4, that would equal a positive 2. That's part of our vertex. Now we need to plug in 2 to get our y value. Well, we can go ahead and eliminate probably. Ooh, in fact, we can eliminate clear down to our answer. Negative 4 is not right. Positive 4 is not right. Negative 2 is not right. Now let's plug it in and make sure that we get negative 1. So we have negative 2 times 2 squared plus 8 times 2 minus 9. 2 squared is 4 times negative 2 would be negative 8 plus 16. That would be positive 8 minus 9 is negative 1. So we get the correct answer right there. Uh, before a truck can drive through a tunnel, it must be determined if the load can easily, can, safe, can fit safely through the tunnel. The parabola, negative 1 fourth times x minus 8 squared plus 16 models the curve of the tunnel. So here's our tunnel. We can darken around it so that we know, okay, this is all brick wall around it. We have to fit through here. If the truck is 12 feet high, what is the maximum width? Well, our width would be going this way. This is width. So our height is 12. We just go up here to 12. Here's where our truck has to go through. We picture it. There's the maximum width of the truck. It's from 4 to 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. So it's eight feet. Okay, have a great time studying for these finals.